The next component we're going to make is a square in a triangle. This is also a fun component to make. It's a little more challenging, not in the construction, but just calculating the formula. But we're going to go over it step by step, and you'll also have the formula in your book and the formula in your handout. Okay, we're going to be making a square in a triangle. This is not my method, but I did work out the formula for it. This method is by Mary McCarthy, and she designed this clever way of making this. I'm going to be changing up a bit. At first I'm going to show you the pieces and then we're going to go over the formula because I think it will make more sense to you if I do it in this order first. We're going to begin with four blocks, four rectangles that are smaller, and then two larger rectangles. This is piece A, this is piece B, this is piece C, and you can see how they correspond here. It looks like it's all triangles, but look what we're making it from. We are going to put all of our squares on top of our triangle, or on top of our rectangles, and we're going to be stitching right along here with a good quarter inch seam. That's one thing I failed to mention. There are several different things that add up to your accuracy. One is a good quarter inch seam. Also, the thread you use, a nice 50 weight thread, cutting accurately, and it all adds up to excellence in quilting. So, we're going to stitch all of these together. And it's kind of funny, and I guess I should do this backwards for the camera. I was not a cheerleader, but I know someone in this room was a cheerleader, so this is a Lynn Wilder cheer. Lean to the left, lean to the right, stand up, sit down, fight, 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 and we are going to stitch along this line. Now, are you going to remember that? Take a look in the book and you'll see the order that we put these together does make a difference. So remember, lean to the left, lean to the right, stand up, sit down, fight, 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 or stitch, stitch, stitch. Okay, so we have pressed these together and it was important that we pressed toward the larger rectangle. In this case, I'm not pressing toward the dark. We have our seam here, so just go on the other side of the square, clip through here, right through the stitches, and you can almost hear them pop. And it's okay if you go through the stitches because that is going to be in the seam allowance. By doing that clipping, it allows us to open it up and be able to press this flat and make sure that it's nice and flat just like this. So we have two of those. We place them then on top of piece C. If they don't fit on piece C, then you know you have to recut or that you've done something wrong. How many of us have all of these angles on our rulers and we don't know what they're for? Well, you are going to use one right now. I'm placing the bottom of this component on my 45 degree angle. It goes right through my stitching. I'm not going corner to corner. I'm focusing on going through those stitches to this corner. And I am marking this. You can either rotate this or rotate your work surface. Again, place this, the 45 degree angle, mark right stitching right through those threads double check before you stitch because look what you get it's very easy to make also very versatile now here's another little tipsy if you're working with stripes if you'll notice that there's a very subtle direction on this fabric. I again want everything to be going the same way so I cut one with the direction going one way and one with the direction going another so that when I do this procedure and mark, stitch, and cut then everything turns out going in the same direction. And this is what we have. So we'll press this away to the triangle. 
and we'll end up with four units like this. Now I'm going to get a little clever here and show you something that I thought I would put together just for the quote show. When my little seven-year-old grandson comes over to play with his Legos and he'll have thousands of Legos and the directions to put something together and if it doesn't work right, it's always, oh Grammy, I had an epic fail. I'm going to show you my epic fail. I thought it was quite funny, but you can always turn that epic fail into a design modification. So that's what I tell him. So I wanted to make this little block, which is, look, it's four squares in a triangle. But I took that piece A and turned it into a Y square. This looks like it's full of triangles, but it's not. But let me show you what I made first. I had all my little parts and pieces out, sewed them all together, and this is what I got. But instead of an epic fail, I'm calling it a buzzsaw quilt. In my quilting room when I was making this, it was more of a buzz kill, but I actually kind of like this. Now, you can also take these and turn those into, I see, sailboats in a sailboat quilt. Okay, can we talk? Sometimes epic fails can turn into wonderful design modifications. Never give up on a block. Just keep turning it and trying different things and you have created something new. It works almost every time. Okay, I am going to try to convince you now how to do this formula, how to use it and make these this component. So let's begin by showing you the pieces. Remember piece A, piece B, piece C. When we look at the finished three inch component, piece A is half of the whole size. So to do the formula for piece A, we want to again begin with our three inch finished size and divide by two because it's half of the finished size and then we're going to add a half an inch. So how do, then do we determine piece B? Well we know it's two inches. This is a two inch square. So we've got two inch and this two inch number is going to go all the way through, follow you through the formula in the book. So we take two inches and then we want to just add one inch to that. So this piece becomes two inches by three inches. Then again to go down and calculate our PC we take our two inches which is half of the component. We want to multiply that times two and subtract a half an inch. So I hope you're following me on this, but you can always download the PDF and look in your book. So one side is going to be, let's go through this again, piece A, which is two inches, we're going to multiply it by two, is four, and subtract a half an inch. Then to get the other width, we're going to take piece A again, two times two is four, plus a half an inch. So this ends up being three and a half by four and a half inch rectangle. I know it sounds a little confusing, but as you're making these, it will make sense and you could see that when I sewed A and B on top of C, everything fit perfectly. Take your time. I found that anything, I can figure anything out if I just take my time and work my way through it. Now that you've learned several components today, let's take a look at some examples of how you can use them in blocks and in quilts. I love this block. I love the, the light and dark and the contrast. So here's your test for the end of the class. What components are in this block? What have we learned? Well, we have a square and a square, double flying geese, a regular flying goose, and half square triangles. It looks much more complex than it is. Now I'm going to throw in a ringer here because there's a component that is in the book but which we did not cover in class. These are called parallel geese. It makes a really nice look. Here is the square in a triangle. I turn that piece A into a half square triangle. So look how it fits in there again with our square and a square. 
We can also make anything different sizes. Here is our square and a triangle again, a very different size. I've never seen a block like this and I'm calling this squares in the corner. So this looks like a flying goose, but it's got those little corner squares and then we just have half square triangles. Here's another one. Parallel geese, square and a square, square and a triangle with a half square triangle. Which is the same here. We'll be putting up some pictures on the website showing you quilts that were made by some of my friends using all the different components. Irene made a quilt in beautiful fall colors and she used every single block in the book to make her quilt. Then you can see the quilt behind me too, is a, it's called Country Corners. On my blog site I have all the directions for making and cut, the cutting directions for these blocks and those are also going to be available to you on the TQS site. So we've thrown out a lot of information. I hope that you remember just half of what I've shared with you today. I've had a wonderful time and I look forward to seeing you in the forum so that you can put out questions and I will answer them and that can be our time to stump the chump and see what we come up with. Again, many thanks to you.